morning, St. Bethlehem. It is a joy to worship with you this morning. I hope you are all staying warm on this ice day and that we are able to gather together again soon. This morning we'll have an abbreviated worship service uh, where we will I will share some announcements and then we will move into a time of prayer and then we'll have scripture and our sermon and then we will enjoy the rest of our snow day. Our announcements this morning are that our church council retreat has been postponed to January 29th. It will start at 9 a.m. I hope that you will join us for a day of planning and reflection and figuring out and discerning who we want to be as a community, as a church for 2022. Also, regardless of the weather tomorrow, the church office will be closed in observance of MLK Day. If there are any other announcements that come up, we will be sure to communicate those with you to you throughout the week. Now we know that whether this is your first time watching us online or you have been a member of St. B for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. And it is a joy to worship with you this morning. At this time, we will move into our time of prayer. I do have a few prayer requests to name. First, we want to remember Barry Devers, who was in the hospital last week. He is home and recovering, but we continue to keep him in our prayers. We also lift up the family of Linda C., who passed away last week. We also remember Congregation Beth Israel in Colleyville, Texas, that experienced an act of violence in their building, in their synagogue yesterday. At this time, I invite you now to comment your joys and concerns below, knowing that throughout this week we are praying for and with one another. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for the warmth we feel, for the coziness of home. Oh God, we lift up to you our prayers, prayers for healing, prayers for peace, prayers for comfort, prayer in the midst of violence. Oh God, we also lift up the prayers of our hearts, ones that we will share with one another and ones that will remain within us. We lift all of these up to you, knowing that you are working in us and through us. Give us the strength and the power and the confidence to be your children in the world to share your unending love with all people and recognize Christ who is with us and in us. And it is in his name that we now pray together the prayer he first taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Hear now the word of God. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is it to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, 
do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stones of water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who did, who had drawn the water, knew, the servant called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first signs the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and the disciples believed him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Phyllis Tickle, in her article, The Great Emergence, observes the uncertainty we feel in the church. She references the Right Reverend Mark Dyer, an Anglican bishop, who talks about the only way to understand what is currently happening as 21st centuries in North America is to first understand that about every 500 years, the church feels compelled to hold a giant rummage sale. And he goes on to say, we are living in and through one of those 500-year sales. Tickle writes in the article, about every 500 years, the empowered structures of institutionalized Christianity, whatever they may be at the time, become an intolerable carapace or hard shell that must be shattered in order to renew, in order that renewal and new growth might occur. This morning, we hear the story of the wedding at Cana where Jesus turns water into wine. We watch as Jesus' mother recognizes the impending shame that could befall the wedding hosts. And then we witness Jesus' first miracle that begins his ministry. He has the stone water jars for purification rites filled to the brim with water, over a hundred gallons of water. We then witness the serving of the water to the chief steward, which has miraculously been transformed into the finest of wines. Having witnessed this miracle, the disciples believe in him. In chapters 2 through 4 of John, we watch as Jesus' ministry unfolds, and Cana serves as bookends to these chapters. We begin with the turning of water to wine. We then hear the explanation of Jesus' body as the new temple, we move into the story with Nicodemus, where we get the famous John 3, 16. We see Jesus offer living water to the unnamed woman at the well. And then he returns to Cana to give life to the son of a royal official. As Jesus moves through these chapters in John, he brings new meaning to water, the temple, wind, birth, and old wells as Jesus proclaims his life-giving powers. As I think about the new life Christ brings to these Jewish rituals, I want to be clear that as we continue to think about the ways in which Jesus breathes new life into the church, we are not condemning or judging our Jewish siblings or their traditions. They are facing extreme threats to their safety every time they gather for worship. Just yesterday, a gunman held 12 people hostage for 12 hours at a synagogue in Colleyville, Texas. Jesus was very much Jewish. And much like you and I can see the places where revitalization in the Christian church can happen, so did he in his own tradition. And because he could see those places and respond to this need for revitalization, we too are invited to do so. As we explore the symbolism contained within this story, 
I invite you to think about the places within our own faith tradition that need to be revitalized. There is deep symbolism in Jesus changing the pots of water into pots overflowing with the best of wine. We begin with the wedding, which has run out of wine, a major mistake to be made. It represents a lack of hospitality and vigor of these traditions. The empty ritual cleansing pots are symbols that point to the emptiness within the traditional religion. Christ comes to bring hospitality and vigor and fullness. He comes to bring vitality to the places where tradition has overtaken meaning. And so just as Jesus brought new life to structures and traditions that were rigid in his time, he is continuing to invite us and challenge us to see the new life that is breaking forth within our own rigid structures and traditions. And this inbreaking is not something that just happens once every 500 years. We see throughout history the rigid structures that need to change. These structures always elevate certain people at the cost of others' humanity. We think about these structures particularly this weekend, as we remember Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King and his work to bring change to the structures that kept black Americans as second-class citizens. We think about the structures still in place today that prioritize people who look like me. As baptized Christians, as people committed to following Christ, as people who bear Christ within us, it is part of our responsibility to change, to challenge rigidity, because Christ did not draw a line of who is in and who is out. Christ continually showed that abundance and vigor and life and acceptance are always possible. Christ continually showed that our old structures can and should be changed, especially when the structures are committed to ignoring someone's humanity. Throughout his ministry, Jesus always celebrated people. People getting married, people being healed, people enjoying meals together. And he did not limit his celebration of humanity to just those who looked like him or followed his traditions. Church, it is time for our own revitalization. We must be willing to see the rigid places that need to be shattered so that we might be renewed and share the radical acceptance and joy of Christ. Now, this isn't easy. It takes a lot of work, a lot of hard work. But when the hard work is done, we feel the Holy Spirit pushing us onward. When the hard work is done, Almighty God is celebrating with us. When the hard work is done, Christ is revealed. And so may we be committed to the hard work. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. As we come to the close of our time together, I invite you to take some time to listen to a hymn, any hymn, your favorite hymn, and feel the joy of Christ wash over you. And be encouraged and renewed to continue in this hard work. And so, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Sustainer, and Redeemer, go with the peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding.